Hi listeners, and welcome to another episode of Love is Everywhere, the podcast. The show where I give comedians assignments of things that are supposed to make you happier, and then I talk to them about it, and we find out how it went. Uh, today's guest is Mark Hallworth. So excited to have him on the podcast. Um, he is a big fan of the podcast as well, which I was delighted to find out. Um, and he had specific questions for me um, about previous episodes that actually led to me coming up with the assignment that I gave him. Uh, so his his assignment is actually born out of a reaction to a previous episode. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, his assignment was about expressing your feelings and uh, self-awareness. Uh, it was sort of a, one of the vaguest sort of assignments that I've given out, but um, tailored very specifically to him, and we had a really interesting conversation about it. Um, if you want to go and support Mark in general, um, you can check out his podcast. You're already listening to podcasts, so I know that you love podcasts. Um, his podcast is called Best of Friends Podcast. Uh, it is a sketch podcast, and you can catch all 100 episodes of that on iTunes. He also works with Yuck Yuck, so if you live in a, in in this Canadian region and you would like to go and see him perform, uh, you can find him through Yuck Yucks and track down where he's performing. Um, I know that you're going to be diehard Mark Hallworth fan club members by the end of this podcast, so <laughs> if you want to go stalk him, you can do that on the Yuck Yucks website. Um, you can also uh, check out the Best of Friends 10 Years at Sketchfest show. That's happening in March, so you've got lots of time to plan. You've got no excuse. You know what's coming. March is still a long way away. You have plenty of time uh, to get ready for the Best of Friends 10 Years at Sketchfest show. Um, also, if you're in Toronto and you're uh, an open mic comedian or you're looking to try stand-up, uh, he hosts a show up and go up show at another bar on the first and third Thursday of every month. Um, and he's such a delightful, soft and squishy person. He's uh, the perfect person to be hosting a show up and go up show. Um, you have nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. If you want to support this podcast in general, uh, ple which I hope that you do, um, <laughs> please <laughs> uh, go rate and subscribe and uh, like and uh, share with your friends and um, uh, build a statue in uh, my image and in Matt's image. Um, <laughs> I'm picturing what a statue of me and Matt would look like. <laughs> <laughs> We're wearing headphones in the statue that I'm picturing. Um, <laughs> yeah, and Matt has cookies. <laughs> if you don't know, I don't think that we've talked about it very much, but Matt always supplies a lovely craft service table for us uh, every <laughs> every recording. So we're always loaded up with sweets and treats. Um, speaking of uh, sweets and treats, that's basically a description of Mark Hallworth as well. So let's get into it. Um, please enjoy this conversation with Mark Hallworth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this theme song. Do you have a copy of the theme song, by the way? It rules. I should put it on my phone. It is great, right? Yeah, it's so happy. Yeah, Matt will get it to you. Okay, thanks, Matt. Yep. All right. <laughs> We're going to try to incorporate Matt a lot in this episode. Matt, <laughs> Matt deserves to be incorporated. He does. He's working hard. He got me a mini Pepsi. It's adorable. It's so, so It makes me feel like a giant. I love, I love miniature-sized mm -hmm. food and things. That was a good radio slur. Oh yeah, not my first, uh, <laughs> not my first slur. <laughs> Thank you so much for being I'm here. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank I'm you. I'm so excited to finally have you on. Oh, ah, that's nice. No, I really, really? am. Yeah, that means a lot. Holy yeah. moly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, are we gonna start with a question of the week or whatever? This is the best part of the episode. Honest, how are you? Honest, how are you? How oh, are you for man. real? First of all, so I have been using honest, how are you's to like check in with myself. Oh, <laughs> it's I the love best. That. I'm like, how are you doing there, Mark? Um, but this is what worries me about answering this question. How much time do you have? Okay. Uh, we will make time. This is, okay. Maybe this will be a two-part episode. We'll yeah. <laughs> or the how are you takes up the first hour. I, I'm uh, experiencing a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's, this is how I'm, how I'm doing. I'm doing great and in shambles at the same time. So I had a. Uh, I feel that. There's, yeah, you know what I mean. Because it's all happening. Yeah, so yeah, you're a human being. You don't feel just one thing at a time. Yeah, right. So the negative stuff, I suppose, is I had a. Um, I was not boyfriend of this woman. I was like seeing a woman. Mm -hmm. Wasn't her boyfriend? And I put my foot down on that because labels are important to me. Mm -hmm. I guess. 
just to keep things clear. But uh, that uh, kind of ended last week or whatever. We were saying she didn't want to have like a long term thing, but we just liked each other. We just kept hanging out. And um, oh, it must have been hell for her because she was like, oh, this isn't supposed to be going this long or whatever. And um, and but then I'd be like, want to hang out on Saturday? She's like, yeah, <laughs> it's the best. Mm-hmm. She was the greatest. And then like a week ago, she was like, we got to like nip it in the bud and have like one grand finale day where it's like cold turkey after that. And I was like, no, <laughs> yeah, Sorry. here we go. So that was a hellish day. But yeah. then everything other than that in my life rules. So it's like a hard thing to be like that roller coaster of like, why am I sad for like half an hour and then have the night of your life with friends? My friends rock. My professional life rocks. My I really like my neighborhood and stuff. Man, mm-hmm. it's the best. So It's hard to get every quadrant of your life functioning highly at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems like one piece is always missing. Right. Or, or not ideal. Nobody seems satisfied. It's really, actually, mm-hmm. yeah, I have a friend who's like, she freaked out kind of about turning 30. And I was like, what's the problem? Like, your job isn't the best but you are married and have a beautiful home. Like, count your blessings. I I I was pumped to turn 30. Really? Yeah. How come? Just because of a number. What's the difference of, yeah. I was just like, get out of here, 20s. (laughs) Okay. I like that. Who are these people looking back fondly on their 20s? I was like, my 20s were a roller coaster. Oh, really? And like, I went through a lot in my 20s. I was like, bring it on next decade. Yeah, right. It's the best I've ever felt. Like, can't wait. For the next decade, it's gonna be so. What do you think better. of 2020? How's it gone so far? Speaking of new decades, um, the world's a mess. Oh yeah, but... yeah, yeah. Is that? Yeah, <laughs> is it worse world... than it was ten years I ago? I was gonna say the world's on fire, but that's literally kind of. True. Oh yeah, um, yeah. But <laughs> no, I heard the fire in Australia is out because it rained, and now everyone's drowning. It's not out. It was. Oh really? Uh, yeah, but it did. Br- the rains did bring it down from like 120 fires to 88 instead. <laughs> that's but still so many fires. Because the ground is so dry, it won't soak up the water so they're having a lot of like mudslides and flash wow, flooding and stuff what a like that. nightmare yeah the world is collapsing in that yeah. sense but me personally i was gonna ask are how are you doing yeah i was just about to ask how mm, you're doing yeah my honest how are you would be uh i am medium okay yep, cool. that's my answer for this week i uh, the last couple weeks i've been doing a lot of hiding Oh, no, of emotions or yeah, physical? No, just like wrapped up in a blanket watching television mm. in all of my spare time. Uh, what show? That's how I've been feeling. I'm going back and watching Game of Thrones. Wow. <laughs> I never did it once. It's too I much got, of a commitment, I I got feel. a couple seasons in, and then there was like a long gap before the next season. And then when the next season came out, I was like, I don't remember anything oh, that happened. okay. So uh, I waited until now and then now i'm going back and so the, i've been spending the last couple of weeks just Wrapped in my up. room watching just s- so much murder <laughs> just <laughs> what's this doing to me yeah. <laughs> but yeah i don't know i think i've been like i don't know maybe some of it's that like kind of time of the year seasonal depression right stuff. january man right that is it's just like a bummer time where yeah like, I feel like everybody's having this too. A lot of yeah, my friends. Yeah, I agree. Just... And like, I was feeling really uh, hard on myself about it. Like, I was looking mm-hmm. at myself there, like wrapped up in my blanket, watching so many hours of television, and I was like, and beating yourself and up beating about myself that, up or about or it, or? being like, oh, d- like, damn it, Tracy, like, you, there's so many things that you're supposed to be doing, and yeah. you're not accomplishing anything, and look at all of this wasted time and stuff like that. And then I started like talking to other people and. Everyone's Everyone doing is it. like, yeah, I'm just like really depressed the last couple yeah, of weeks right. and I'm just hiding in my room and I'm like, me too. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I feel like we're all in it together. So I yeah. feel a little better. And also at the same time, is there really anything else you'd rather be doing? Like, it feels good. Mm-hmm. And why is that bad? Like, yeah, I have been the last couple of days a little better about like making myself get out of bed to mm-hmm. do the things that should get done and that will lead to me feeling better. Yeah. Like, Yesterday, when there was that like blizzardy storm, mm-hmm. I really, really wanted to order pizza for dinner. The poor person who would have delivered that. <laughs> I pizza. know. <laughs> and then I had that thought, and that I was like, "Oh, it's gonna be like bad for them. Oh, like they have to deliver you. pizza in the storm, and like that's awful." And then also, like, I'm not gonna feel better after having ate pizza. Um, you wouldn't though, really? Oh, uh, no. Pizza, okay. Yeah. No, no. Oh, pizza is a very emotional food for uh, me. Okay. Um, at the live show, Love Is Everywhere, yeah. I do a check-in at the beginning of the Domino's Pizza Scale. 
Huh? Where uh, yeah. the theory is that this theory comes from Cassie Baratus that yeah, you can yeah. measure your mental health based on how many times you ordered pizza that month. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. So, uh, again, it's oh. very accurate. <laughs> 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 it's been consistent. Yeah, That's so funny. I was like, I'm not going to add another pizza to the scale. I was like, I'm going to make myself actually go to the grocery store, buy food, buy a pizza, and then make <laughs> <laughs> and then make a real dinner for myself at home. So I felt proud of myself. For right. That. So and I think it, maybe I'm coming out of the hiding weeks. Yeah, I don't know. I remember I after the summer of like grade ten or something, I played so much of The Sims. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> such boy. an addictive game! Yeah, we could do an entire Sims episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, but I remember like kind of looking out the window and the weather was nice and being like, "Should I be outside?" But then being like, "I'm having a blast, though." Mm. You know what I mean? Like, and now I'm whatever this is, however many years later, and I'm like, "No, that was a funny thing to do." <laughs> I have. I don't know if I did waste any great time. Great love for the Sims. Oh, it's so entertaining. <laughs> Why is it so fun? Uh, um, well, I'm glad to hear you might be coming up, but I don't... Uh, but also, I'm going to not judge myself yeah, if I'm not. Yeah, I don't judge you I for can... watching Game of Thrones. Yeah. Enjoy it, yeah. If I continue to hide in my room and watch Game of Thrones for a couple of weeks, that's also fine. Yeah, that'll be good, too. Yeah, so it's a... I don't know, it's good practice in uh, going easy on myself and... Mm, right, yeah, I wonder... Not if... being hard on myself and not getting things wrong. You know what's a cool thing about your episode, too, is the Marina Lopez episode, where it's like... He says something cool about it. It's like, even if we're not figuring this out, people that are listening to this might be like, oh, okay, that's yeah. how I should treat myself or whatever. Yeah. And it's like helping other people. This is all for you, listeners. Mm, dear <laughs> yeah, listeners. Yeah, yeah. Should we get into your assignment? Yeah, okay. So c can I give the etymology of how this happened, yeah, I guess? Yeah, 100%. okay. And And I, I hope I even understood it. I hope I interpreted the whatever assignment properly. Whatever your interpretation of it was fine. Let's do, yeah, let's mm -hmm. do whatever I did. So, again, I'm such a huge fan of this podcast or whatever. So, and I was listening to the John Mawson episode. Listeners, go back and listen to that one where John has a thing where he's talking about his roommate playing piano with headphones in or something, mm -hmm. but the clacking wakes him up or something. And then at first he's all upset, but then he's like, well, who cares? Like, let the guy play piano. What's the difference? And, uh, and I was listening to that being like, yeah, I don't know. It's water off a duck's back. That's fine. Um, but, and then later in the episode, you talk about like, relationships and compromise and stuff and you have a great line tracy where you say uh no at the beginning of a relationship you should be unapologetically yourself <laughs> which yeah. is a great way to say it but then i was all up in arms about like when then do you fight for yourself so the three options i guess when do you fight when do you compromise and when is it water off a duck's back because for my life i've realized that there's like four things that i really fight for and then like a dozen things that I am happy to compromise and then a billion things that I don't care about at all <laughs> that is water off a duck's back. And I think that is like weirding people out, though. I, th I think people are like, Mark, you should care more about certain things. And so m the assignment I think you gave me was to <laughs> whenever I am in a situation where I have one of those three choices mm -hmm. to at least identify it and identify what I did and don't judge what I did, but to at least like pointed out you nailed it did i oh yeah thank god <laughs> okay cool yeah, that's 100 percent what i intended it to okay be. sweet sweet uh so the first thing i noticed is that if i really cared about everything i'd be dead uh, you oh, know what i mean absolutely. like you know how much shit there is that i could be up in arms about and is this what normal people are is this why everybody's so stressed out all the time <laughs> i think because so, they get kinda. super invested in all this nonsense i think yeah um i think about this a lot like i don't sweat the small stuff yeah that's the way I would put it because I'm like, if I sweated the small stuff, even if I only sweat the big stuff. Yeah, I'm all out of sweat. still exhausting. I'm <laughs> yeah, out of sweat. I'm dehydrated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think a lot of people have difficulty not sweating everything. Yeah. Small wild. stuff, big stuff. Um, and it would be exhausting. Well, then yeah, now I'm up and yeah, this is what confuses me is that people are like, Mark, fight for yourself. And I'm like, who cares? Mm -hmm. There's such other, there's so many other things I feel. Australia's on fire. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, I'm not doing anything about that, unfortunately. Uh, so, okay. Here's example number one. This is a thing that I fought for. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. So I live with this guy. He's not a, he's not a comedian. I, I've been living with a lot of comedians, and this is my first non-comedy roommate. It's just some guy who moved in, and he's like a 23-year-old, and he listens to music on a damn Bluetooth speaker. Mm. And I've, he's not the only roommate I've ever had to do this, but... 
you know, the walls in our place, and I've got a, a, a people that live above us, including our landlord who works above us. He's like an accountant. And I had one roommate once. Yeah, he was listening to music in the shower. Do you listen to music in the shower? No. No, it's so loud. It would have to be crazy loud because it's got to be louder than the sound of the water yes. and all that. So this guy goes into the shower and he like blasts music. And <laughs> our landlord works directly above the shower. And he's an accountant. And I'm just like, I'm just picturing this poor guy being like, with clients being like, I'm so sorry, I'm going to have to foreclose on your house. And then right underneath him is like, I stay up too late. Bah, bah, bah. Like the room is like vibrating. <laughs> so so I have been going up to this guy to be like, this is something I'm fighting for, to put my foot down, to be like, turn off your damn music or just put in headphones. How hard is this? And maybe don't shower with music, especially if it's like eight in the morning. So this happened like two nights ago too, where I came home super late and he was still up and, He's like, I got to wake up at like seven or eight or something. I got to leave at 830. And I was like, yeah, I haven't slept a lot recently, so I'm going to pass out. And I'm going to sleep until like 10, from like two to 10. And he's like, cool, that sounds good. And then at 8 a.m., he blasts music in the shower. I'm like, you know I'm sleeping, you jackass. Yeah. Like, so that and I come blasting out of the room and I was like, turn it on. And he's like, oh, yeah, sorry. Like, but I've done that like four times this week. So that came up a bunch. Mm -hmm. That is worth. And but even I'm noticing that it's like um wearing on me in terms of like constantly being on it like one time it was sort of loud this week and i caught myself being like well i'm leaving in like 10 minutes is it worth it for me to be like turn off your damn music anyways bye <laughs> like but why isn't this sinking in anyway that drove me nuts that was something worth fighting for aha good and you I fought wasn't, for a thing yeah i fought for something yeah. which i rarely do uh now, now what? Do we talk about like the uh, the judgment, or <laughs> which should I have fought for it, or what? Like, yeah. Did did you clock any times this week that you swallowed your feelings? And oh, a hundred times. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Here, so here's another one. Here's uh, uh, another thing that happened this week that I was like, who cares? This is water off a duck's back for sure. Um, I play drums at a daycare center. That's one of my uh, for five hours a week. Adorable. It's the craziest job in the world. Yeah, for sure. So these kids are like ages zero to five. They don't know what's going on. But there's myself on the drums and there's a piano player. And I don't have to talk to any of these kids. I don't interact. I'm not very good with kids. <laughs> but the uh, there's like a guy on a guitar and a, and a person with a puppet. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And we're learning about different rhythms or different styles of music or different instruments. So they're like, oh, it's country music week or whatever. We got the tambourines. Hey, hey band, what's a great uh, country music song that we could rock out to on our tambourines and then I'm like one two three and I just like go yeah. crazy <laughs> and and I've been watching all these Blink-182 videos and stuff and it's so <laughs> fun to like learn these and I'm flipping the drumsticks it's insane I'm, I'm putting way more work into this but it's super fun and um, so one thing though that is water off a duck's back is that this poor guy who I play with he's uh, on the piano Really good piano player, but he's he's got tinnitus of all things, which oh, is yeah. insane for a musician. And he has like a, a a super tinnitus where it's like not just ringing, I guess, in your ears. It's like buzzing. His whole head must be like a beehive. I feel so bad for this guy. Mm -hmm. And um, and so he is really good at the piano, but I don't think he's particularly good at like playing with a band because he's not really he doesn't have his head up and he's got earplugs in because his head must vibrate all the time. It must be in so much pain all the time. But because of the fact that he has earplugs and he can't like hear yeah, or like take directions, yeah, else. he's just sort of in. His he's own kind of in his own world. world. And he's got his head down half the time. He can't, and so we're trying to give visual cues of like, okay, verse mm -hmm. two and stuff, and he can't. He's not like clocking into this stuff. And um, I've been working with this guy for a while, and uh, this week he had a funny thing of like, we're practicing some song and we play it twice, and he's like, cool, okay. And then ten minutes later, he's like. When are we going to practice this song? And I was like, we played that twice. And he was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, is anything registering with you at all? Like, and I, so that, but I'm not his boss. I'm just a fellow player. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's not my job to like sit him down and be like, all right, test, you know, see if you could play this without any cues from anybody. Do you really know what you're doing? That's not really my job. Mm -hmm. So that was like, as kind of bothersome as it is that the music isn't as tight as it could be, I was like, I'm not bothering this guy <laughs> i suppose so that was something that was water off a duck's back for sure i don't there's so many things that are water off a duck's back that i don't i didn't clock too many of those because yeah. it's like it's just constant there's just a constant yeah you know what i mean that... if i got bothered about everything yeah i guess like on my way here was a uh, um 
was like crappy transit but then i'm like well, what am i gonna get upset by you know what i mean like yeah what am i gonna yell at somebody what like i think there's a the, like i don't know to go back to your question about like when should you mm-hmm. let things roll off your back and when should you not i think there's something really valuable about letting things like the transit being really slow mm-hmm. or like i think we talked in the john episode about like waiting in line and having somebody be annoying behind you or like things like that right what are you gonna do turn around and scream at this person (laughs) is that really gonna improve your day or your long-term anything i think it's when swallowing your feelings or making like not being unapologetically yourself has long-term consequences and i think sometimes it can be difficult to see how something in the moment would have long-term consequences. Yes, interesting. And then does it ever happen where it's like, now it's you've gone too deep and it's like, uh-oh, yeah. now bringing up the situation, everyone's like yeah. uh, in conflict. Oh, man, okay, that's sure. so cool. All right, yeah. thanks, Tracy. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> something like that, yeah. Yeah, I think mostly in uh, like um, re- relationships in your life, like mm-hmm. in whether it's like romantic relationships yeah, yeah. or friendships and things like that, I think it's important to to confront things in the moment right to i wonder if i have a hard time like catching it though you know what i mean being like uh oh that's kind of interesting that's what's been going on this week with with this exercise is me actually identifying those moments Mm -hmm. and then i guess i should probably do this all the time to then be like uh oh i gotta jump on this right away yeah well the the only way that you start to develop the pattern of being able to recognize those mm-hmm. moments is by practicing and just right, yeah, being yeah. aware I never of really them. thought about this. Uh, which is why I didn't give you an assignment that was like, you have to confront somebody. Yeah, that right. <laughs> <laughs> Uppercut your... Yeah, just to, to <laughs> practice an awareness of it and start like checking in with yourself in those moments mm-hmm. so that that at least, that awareness becomes more second nature. Okay. Um, and then when things that need to be confronted come up, you might be more able to recognize. Yeah, I'd like to do that. Oh, yeah, that's, that's been a thing in, in romantic relationships for sure of like a lot of my um, upset or conflicts and stuff like that. I kind of deal with turmoil internally. Yeah, <laughs> um, me ooh, too. speaking of, yeah, have you watched this Dr. Ruth uh, documentary? No, I haven't yet. Buddy, it's unreal. Okay, <laughs> so let me share this. This hit me hard. And uh, and the person I was watching it with was like, does that sound familiar, Mark? I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so I'm not comparing my upbringing at all to the traumatic upbringing of Dr. Ruth. Uh, that's insane. So, you know, she was orphaned by the Holocaust or some crazy thing, you know. And um, so but her daughter has a line. So it's like two parts. So her daughter has this line where it's like, um, my mom had to deal with some things and it's weird because I think she has emotionally reconfigured herself <laughs> to yeah. deal with problems or something. And she's like, I, for example, I've never seen my mom cry, which is bonkers. And, um, and my friend was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> so, and then in the documentary, she visits like this, this like holocaust museum thing where they have a list of everybody that died in this concentration camp or something and she's trying to find what happened to her parents and this is all happening like you watch it happen and dr ruth is like yeah my dad's name was this and they're like yeah yeah his number was this and he was murdered and she's like okay and then and then the same thing with the mom and then (laughs) there's like a beat and she goes well i gotta go but i'll cry about this later (laughs) yeah (laughs) and which is like now hold on is that bad because i 100 percent identified with that i've i've out loud said a sentence like that before where i'm like I don't, I don't really i gotta go to work or i gotta you know what i mean and now to compartmentalize feelings that's not repressing feelings it's not ignoring them it's just like moving them around is that bad i thought that was you know i, I kind of like that i can do that <laughs> <laughs> well i think there's something to it of like it's convenient to be a person <laughs> yeah. who does that um because I'm like that as well. Yeah, okay. Like, uh, Yeah, I got to go I, teach a class. I can't yeah, ball I in front of these kids. I definitely have had so many times where I'm like feeling an overwhelming emotion, like mm-hmm. the, like uh, something where I could cry. Mm-hmm. And then I'm just like, oh, but uh, like this is not a convenient time to cry. Right, I will, I I will make work. a note to cry later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, <laughs> is that bad? <laughs> I think it's bad. Why, though? <laughs> I, because... Because you are dealing with it. You're just moving it later. And also another thing is that I move it. So, no, actually, go ahead. Sorry, you, you, you were no, about no, to no, start a story. Ahead. Okay, so 
I was uh, cheated on one time. Oh, no. Uh, she she didn't come home. She's like partying with her friends or whatever. And I got to work the next morning. I got to teach a class at uh, at Hummer College, mm-hmm. and I um so I wake up and she isn't home. And I was like, yo. At first I thought she was dead, which is uh maybe me jumping to conclusions. So fortunately I call and she picks up and she's like, I screwed up. And I was like, okay, well I can't deal with this right now because <laughs> I got to go teach. And um. So then, though, I went and I had like a big break in between the two classes. And that's when I got all my negative anger feelings out as I'm walking around. Just ah. And then the problem is when I got back to the house, I had really vented a lot of the feelings out. And I guess from her point of view, I was like kind of mellow. And then I guess in her head, she was probably like, does anything bother this fucking guy? Like, what happened? (laughs) Just because I didn't, like, work through the emotions with her. Mm -hmm. And I'm realizing now that it's like people in partnerships, I think, want to work through those things together to grow. I guess. Is that true? I don't really know how people function. No, I think that that is kind of true. Um, But I do also think, like, um, that it's not an unhealthy thing to kind of work through or vent some negative emotions before That's you're with the partner. Yeah, because you might say God knows what, like, exactly. and you're not feeling... <clears throat> yeah, like, I think there's really something to having kind of sorted through the anger right? before yeah. you get to the person so that you can, like, especially in a romantic relationship... Right, you say things you don't that mean. That you're not going to say something you don't mean and that you're going to come at it, um, like, but I guess this is sort of a different circumstance, but, like, if you were uh, dealing with a problem that you're going to get past... Right, right. That you that can get this past is not alone the anyway. end, yeah. Right, like then if you have already vented the anger, whether it's like on your own or to another person, like a friend or or somebody mm-hmm. that you that you can talk to about it, um, and a lot of the like visceral anger has dissolved by the point that you're talking to your partner about it. I think that that's, in my opinion, I think that that's better right, because that's what I thought. then you're able to come at the conversation with your partner from a place of like uh let i'm not here to vent at you mm-hmm. uh, like let's work let's work this on out. it from here but huh? i do also think um and uh, like this is something that has come up for me many times of uh, you still have to express all of the reasons that you're angry with your partner even if uh if the anger isn't showing the I anger guess? isn't yeah. showing yeah, yeah. And even if the person's already sorry, like that's something that I've had to deal with, uh, again, kind huh? of working out in my head. Like if I'm, if I'm angry with a person, yeah, and they're not and, apologetic, and <laughs> no, if if they're if they're sorry, yeah, and uh, I can tell that they feel badly yeah. for the thing, I'll just I'll just accept it and be like, okay, then it, like let's just move on. Okay. In and what happens is. Because I haven't s- expressed all of the reasons that I'm angry, Ooh, yeah, uh, that gets stored somewhere. Oh no, I see. Yeah, yeah, right? okay. So if you don't finish expressing all of your feelings, that gets put somewhere, and then that turns into resentment. Right, I can imagine that. So uh, what I've had to do is recognize when that's happening, like mm-hmm. <laughs> when I'm in in some kind of conflict with somebody. And they apologize before I'm done telling them oh. what, like, my feelings about it. Right, and you're like, no, no, I got more. I yeah, <laughs> I have I have to like say to them like, I appreciate your apology. Yeah, and I accept it, and I move on. I'll, I will move on, but I need to finish telling you how I feel about yeah. this, so that we can move past it. Yeah, right, right. Or else I'm just gonna store it in yeah. a resentment folder. Yeah. Exactly. Um. What about this? Is another thing that happened this week. Sorry for clapping. I just heard how how you obnoxious that must have been in the in the microphone. Dude, that was okay. That was, that's nuts. Shame yeah, on yeah, you, yeah. Mark. No, no, I know. I've, I've done podcasts <laughs> before, and for the listeners that were like, "What happened there?" Jesus. Um. So another thing that happened this week. This happened last night, and this was water off a duck's back. Just because I'm like, what if the person is too stubborn slash dumb <laughs> to <laughs> to or, or to even, like, register what's going on. So we had a, a heckler at this show mm-hmm. who wasn't crazy. It was her first time ever at a comedy show. And so I did explain, like, well, please don't shout things during the show, obviously. Yeah. Like, you might... Uh, she was like, I'm used to watching stuff on Netflix. And I'm like... Kind of well, made a joke about... Yeah, I'm like, well, this isn't really Netflix. But, yeah, it's kind of like that. I, I, I did make a joke about, yeah, 
from her point of view being like, yeah, I keep talking to the TV and it doesn't talk back. Oh, mm-hmm. I should see this live or whatever. But then, uh, yeah, out loud I was like, Yo, please don't talk to the comedians. But she apparently, yeah, she was kind of shouting some stuff out and and um, it wasn't spiteful or upset or all. But mm-hmm. afterwards she was like pretty drunk as well. And she's like, oh, sorry about that. Or And then she pauses and then she's like, but when I shouted out, play Wonderwall, that was pretty funny though, huh? And I was like, uh, <laughs> what? Like, why? I, I didn't even notice that she had said that. I yeah. guess she said that to one of the other acts. And she was like, yeah, well, my friends and I go to concerts and, you know, they, there's like a pause between songs and they're like, you know, I, my friends and I always go, play Wonderwall. And it's, but that's, come on, that's, I know that some of the other things I said maybe were annoying, but that, that was funny, huh? And then I was just like, water off a duck's back, like, <sighs> no, please don't. Anyway, bye. <laughs> like, I, I'm not going to sit down and then, like, give you a hard time. Because, first of all, the show's over. You know what I mean? Like, maybe I, all I could do is, like, please don't do that for future shows. But I'm not going to. And you're way too drunk or stupid to even accept the change of opinion. Like, what do you do with that when some, someone's so stubborn in their opinion anyways that it's like, well, I'm not going to waste effort mm-hmm. trying to change your mind. Um, well, this is a, a story I told the other day that my friend, we were watching Lord of the Rings. He may have been kind of drunk too, but we were watching the extended edition or whatever. And there's, there's some shot or something. And he's like, oh, I didn't, uh, oh, that, that must be part of the extended edition. Because when I saw this in theaters, I didn't see the, I, I don't recognize that shot. And there was like 12 of us. And we were like, no, that's part of the original. And he was like, <laughs> no. And he was like, going to die on this hill. <laughs> like, who cares? And it, so then I was like, yeah, in the back of my head, I'm like, well, I'm 99% sure he's wrong, but I'm not going to be like, no, like what an insane and fight to have now. Like, mm-hmm. so when people are stubborn, when do you fight back or when do you explain to uh, them? Because really, they're not going to change their mind. Yeah, that's really hard. <clears throat> it's really hard to know, honestly, mm-hmm. like something like somebody insisting that the this shot was not in the original movie. Yeah, like. like well, who cares about think, that? Yeah, I think that I would just be like, yeah, okay, maybe, like, yeah. and just let that go. Um, with the heckler, like, it's uh, it's difficult when it's a part of the reason that somebody won't absorb something is that they're drunk. Yeah, I feel yeah, like exactly. that is like, just a lost well, cause, and yeah, just don't bother. If if she weren't drunk, I mm-hmm. probably would have sort of said something. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's that's the thing is like uh with hecklers is most people don't realize what a heckler even is and when they are being a heckler. Like people have this idea in their minds of a heckler is somebody who's yelling out like, boo, you suck. Right. Yeah. Don't quit your day job. Like stuff like that. But they don't realize a heckler is literally any time you are shouting something out at a comedy show. If you are talking, you are heckling. That's a heckler. Um, so, uh, there and like you know, there's different kinds of hecklers. Yeah, like the there's the mean you? ones, but yeah. you but you don't get the mean ones very often. No, you don't. Yeah. Most of the time, it's like, yeah, somebody who thinks they're funny. Yeah. Or and, helping you. Or helping yeah. that like they think it'll make a better show yeah. because like the, oh the dealing with the heckler part <laughs> will mm-hmm. be funny, um or that what they have to say is going to contribute to the comedy of the show or you get um drunk people in the front row who forget that it's not a conversation um yeah, and they're right. not yeah, really shouting stuff out they're just sort of responding as if it's a conversation that yeah. you're having with oh, them oh she's so right yeah because like, they uh... sort of forgot <laughs> that that's not what's happening yeah. right now um and uh, to the like well what i said was really funny like wasn't that wonderwall thing funny right like uh I don't know. It would depend on how much energy I had to give to that person that day. If I had the energy, I probably would say something like, like, you know, maybe I understand how from your perspective you think that that that's helping, but it's really not. Mm -hmm. And this is like a very comedy is a very careful, like mathematical equation. And when there's silence, even the silence is important. Yeah, that was planned. And that's a planned (laughs) silence where we need it to be silent in order to have the timing all work out the way that we have practiced. Mm -hmm. So when you shout stuff out, you're really getting in the way of what we're trying to do. Um, And if you think you're funny, maybe you should do stand up. That's another thing. She was like, uh, after, at the end of that conversation, she was like, yeah, I should be up there. And I was like, well, we have an open mic on Sundays upstairs. You should just go there. (laughs) And she was like, nah, (laughs) right away. Like, I was like, but I do find like, I think, um, 
less long-term consequences in dealing with a stranger than dealing with somebody who's in your personal life. So, for example, so putting your foot down and fighting with this heckler because of the fact that there's no long-term consequences is a better idea? No, I think, like, um, it's less necessary for oh, you to confront yeah. that okay, person yeah. because they don't continue to be in your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is something of, like, they'll continue to behave in a certain way. So when you have a moment to kind of, like, like educate somebody right, yeah, yeah. on the if fact that the their brain. behavior has, it is valuable to the world because they're going to go to other comedy shows mm-hmm. and, and be a heckler there. Um, but I think the place to focus first would be on um, standing up for yourself in your personal life with yeah. people who the are and continue ones, yeah. to be in your life. Yeah, that's a good lesson of the yeah the mm-hmm. long termness for sure. And it because um uh I'm trying to work on this bit about labels about when people are like oh we're in this thing I don't want to put labels on it. I'm like no labels are good. <laughs> if you went to a grocery store and there are no labels, you would freak <laughs> out. <laughs> you need labels. That's a good premise. <laughs> and so I'm trying to like um those particularly in a romantic situation where it's like a, a lot of times i've noticed in romance it's like if there was no long-term um goal i suppose mm-hmm. where it's like you don't even see this going anywhere well if there if we're kind of a, if there's a funk in the air because you're in a bad mood yeah I, I caught myself a lot being like well you're gonna feel better tomorrow you know what i mean so i'm i would rather not like fight for it and be like hey you can't talk to me like that and like Mm -hmm. start something which would have a better long-term effect you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and so i caught so so many times it was water off a duck's back but then the partner would then be like um uh, if he's allowing me to be this mean to him how mean can i be (laughs) and can't just like keep going and i wouldn't fight for myself in those situations that was like a big thing as to what instigated this uh assignment at all Mm -hmm. because i was thinking about that a lot being like well i don't want to create more negativity but then it's like what you're saying about the long-termness of more negativity is like exactly and even uh, like if you're thinking about it in a relationship that has an end point Mm -hmm. um there's still value in standing up for yourself and not letting things roll off your back um because you're teaching yourself how you allow people to treat you well, are you though? Because I know my own self worth. I'm in my own. I'm fine with that, and I know yeah. how I should be treated. Yeah, and I know I, that I'm not being treated that way right now. But um, who cares? It'll be different. Like w- when she's being mean to me, I'm not taking any of this personally. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So that's why it was tough to sink in. Yeah, that message. I don't know. This is a this is a tough one because like your experience with this might be different than my mm. experience. Yeah, yeah. But I know that for me. Uh, like, I've been in relationships with people who do not treat me well, Mm -hmm. um, to put it lightly. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't realize the lasting impact that it was having on me until much Mm, later. Yeah. Where at the time, I was thinking, like, what you just said. Yeah, it's lovely. Right? Of, like, yeah, but I know that these things they're saying to me right now aren't true about me, or, like, I know what... I'm worth and like I'm not like letting this sink in and get mm-hmm. to me and stuff and then like even now I'm still finding places where those things come up right you know, where I'm like oh and that's so from embedded. years ago <laughs> yeah and right and that's like embedded now yeah. and uh like I didn't realize at the time what I was allowing to sink in I think of it kind of like um I remember in like elementary school like grade six to eight we'd Mm -hmm. have a lot of uh when we'd have health class we'd have a lot of talk about like body image and like don't let all of these like unrealistic depictions of women like sink in and let you feel bad about your body where did you go to school wow (laughs) (laughs) that's progressive man and i i remember thinking at the time like oh like i don't Mm -hmm. you know like i don't no i don't let any of that stuff sink in or Affect or me. affect me yeah. or how I feel about my body. And then that first Dove campaign came out with the, the like, real women, you know? Sure. And uh, when I saw it, I was like, whoa, okay, yeah, I was definitely letting that stuff sink in. <laughs> and I had no idea oh. because I'm looking at this right now and it's extraordinarily comforting. 
to see. Right. And I was like, I did. I totally thought that I was not letting myself be affected oh, by yeah. by the advertising and stuff that I was seeing until I saw that, and I was like, oh no, I think I really was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, like sometimes you don't realize, yeah, what you're actually going to feel about something later on. Um, well, you see it saying uh, in uh, I caught something from a previous relationship of like asking permission to do things. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, what the hell? Like, and actually, I didn't even really around, catch it. Like... Somebody had to point it up being <laughs> like, you don't have to do that. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. I'm so used to asking permission to hang out for an extra 15 minutes with my friends or something like that. It was yeah. such a yeah, it's I kind of like that, though, being like having those realizations, having somebody like. I don't know, you being like, yeah, I think you're bringing a lot of things in from a previous thing. Mm-hmm. Can I shout out another one that I that happened this week that I was, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know, proud of like fighting for myself? Yeah. Because I bet there's like 100 Torontonians that feel this the same way of I got onto the Kipling bus and it was jammed and somebody uh, had their bag on the seat and we're sitting on the outside <laughs> and with zero hesitation. I had my bag. I chucked it over them and immediately just <laughs> rolled my ass over their face. It was like such an insane feeling. And it's funny because you're talking about like, well, it's not a long term relationship. You don't have mm. to fight for. I was like, I don't give a damn. I'm. Bu-. And she like clearly like scoffed and like rolled yeah. her eyes. And I was like, yep, roll your <laughs> eyes while I roll my ass over your face. It was it is the satisfying. best. It was so satisfying. It is satisfying. Yeah. Do you find like um when you when you do get angry or you do confront things, Mm -hmm. um, do you jump a couple of levels? (laughs) I don't know what you mean necessarily, but what my, what I think you mean is very funny. (laughs) (laughs) Um, if you're holding things back Mm -hmm. all the time, when you finally do get an opportunity to vent, Mm -hmm. uh, an anger or a frustration, do you maybe escalate it a little bit higher than it needs I to be? I wonder if I do. I don't think so, but I think what's what's unique is that because I'm so rarely uh, putting my foot down or freaking out or whatever, I think it is quite jarring or slash potentially hilarious when I do get to that emotion just because it's, it's something that yes. people so rarely see of i have because i never I really get that reaction from people as well really people, oh yeah yeah people laugh hysterically when i'm angry yeah, exactly yeah <laughs> because I they got, never see it i got so mad at somebody because i host a show on thursday nights that is a show up and go up man it was three and a half hours long on thursday just kept going mm-hmm. and the second last act went on was a was a nut job and then was like just about to put on their coat and leave and i'm like you're not even gonna support the last guy and i went nuts <laughs> on them i really like freaked out on them and all the other people were like howling because mm. of how like out of character it was but it was legitimate like yeah. no you're not allowed to do that you think that's insane um i also love how on this podcast it happens all the time where it's like are we allowed to swear on this just because <laughs> the you, you <laughs> and the vibe of this whole podcast um I was gonna try to uh, sneak that question in <laughs> to pretend I don't know. I know you know better. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's so funny you being like, "What vibe is this? <laughs> like, what image?" And everyone's like, "I don't know, Tracy. I don't know." I think you you said a swear once on the podcast that in the headphones I was listening. I was like, "Whoa, wow, crazy. <laughs> Take it easy." <laughs> One thing about playing drums at the daycare center is that after after this like breakup situation, I was like taking it out on the drums. Oh, that was yeah. funny. <laughs> I was like supposed to be playing like country music and mm. I was like, bam, I was just like, this is some hardcore country music. That's how a kid would play drums. Kind of. Yeah, totally. So I don't think anybody was upset, but I was uh, I, I've over the last like year um, or the, the, the time I've been playing at the at the daycare center. Um, the drums have been a really nice outlet. Another thing I do a lot is skateboarding and sometimes mm. it's like just hitting that board as hard as you can to lift it. Like Having just try to go high. Kind of- physical outlet yeah for emotion is really helpful Mm -hmm. like even if it's just walking right like uh, running (laughs) i've uh, i've paused arguments with partners before to be like i would like to go take a walk yeah 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 give me 20 minutes come back to this and then i'll like take my dog for a walk around the block that that goes back though to that thing of um uh like let me vent the negativity yeah. out so that I don't just blow it off on you right exactly. now. Yeah. 
has also like with relationships that are continuing like mm-hmm. lasting friendships romantic relationships uh things accumulate right mm-hmm. so like if you have those moments where like you say something that you don't mean that's maybe really hurtful mm-hmm. or lands on the person in a specific way like people they might not forget that and oh that, totally right? and they will come back and some other arguments exactly. that comes later yeah or like even if they never talk about it again it gets stored somewhere mm-hmm. just like if you don't vent everything yeah it gets uh, like that gets stored away same thing on the other side so you want to be careful about not like making lasting damage mm-hmm. uh. <laughs> it's not <laughs> easily forgotten but yeah. uh, that being said um, I think it's really important, especially in a romantic relationship, because they're so fragile and it's such a like s- delicate ecosystem mm-hmm. that it's really important to confront like most things. Yeah, totally. And and also because you spend a lot of time together, so mm-hmm. it's like, why aren't we sharing like everything? We yeah. spend all the time together. It, like if you're irritated by something or if uh, something has hurt you. Instead of even if it's a, a moment where you're like, you know, like, oh, they're just in a bad mood today, and mm-hmm. like not personal and they won't be in a bad mood tomorrow. I think it's still important to talk yeah. about it. Maybe not in the moment, like if they're having a really bad day and they're taking their feelings out on you. I think it's important to to talk to them about that. Maybe not in that moment yeah, where they're freaking out. Tough. Maybe after the dust is settled. Well, I've also and they're feeling yeah. better to go back to them and be like, "Hey, like I'd like to talk about that and this is how it made me feel." I remember I was dating somebody once that was like that did had kind of an outburst and and then I remember asking and then she was like, "Well, mom, it's gone. <laughs> we can't talk about it now. I'm not there." And I was like, "What? Oh, no. man. Okay, right? I, I was no. right to be like, this is tough. I I'd like to get that. The- okay. Also like um we talked about this a little bit on the Craig Fay episode mm-hmm. like I'm a person who, like, I might not really uh, figure out how I'm feeling until later. Like, Right. Oh, me too. Right? Yeah. Like, you were talking about the, like, compartmentalizing things right. and, like, moving yeah, yeah. emotions around and stuff. I think that I've developed that as a kind of coping mechanism of, like, I'm very good in a crisis. Mm-hmm. Um, in the moment, I am cut off from my emotional experience of what's happening as a kind of like protective mm. shield. Uh, okay. And then it isn't until later when the crisis or whatever it is isn't happening anymore that I'm able to feel whatever emotional response I had to that situation. Right. So I'm not going to be able to properly articulate how I feel about it or to be able to tell you, oh, that hurt my feelings or things like that in the moment. I'm not going to be able to. I'm going to have to come back to you yeah. later when the moment is gone. I'm so bad at communicating these kind of emotional. Mm. Um, somebody was talking about emotional unavailability. I remember being like, am I emotionally unavailable? And they were like, I don't think so. But I think, Mark, you are very um, uh, focused on keeping people in good moods and yeah. stuff. And one thing that I'm noticing is that people don't don't seem to know when I'm upset, which I find odd. How do you not know that is it because i'm turning it a lot of things into jokes and then laughing about it like yeah you uh, like um maybe you've kind of uh gotten really good at not showing that stuff visually right. unless you choose to show it yeah right okay so maybe you're just like very good at not letting on that you're upset unless you are intending the other person to recognize that you are upset. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that makes sense. The is it also possible that my problems are so minimal that I <laughs> what's the <laughs> difference? Like like I, I remember talking to somebody and being like, Oh, thanks for letting me vent and they were like, That was a vent? You crazy? Like you don't know problems. <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, you're right. I don't know. <laughs> like but I do appreciate that you listen to me right now, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So I don't know. Isn't that me being upset? I thought people could see that. Also, a lot of my upset gets turned into comedy or whatever. So mm-hmm. I think a lot of people in the community, at least in the comedy community, rather than personal partners, are the ones that see me like freak out about work or something. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, because that's I, your place where you vent it. Yeah, you know what I mean? And and I'd rather do that than put this on you and you got your problems uh, of today. You know what I mean? So 
I always like being kind of like a cheerleader in partnerships and stuff yeah. to be like, if you had a bad day, I'm there and let's be in a bad mood together about what bothered you today. I think that's a good thing, but I think there's also something about like, um, how do you totally let somebody in if you aren't showing them when you're when you're upset well, and I when I was, and yeah. when you had a bad day, right? Right. Yeah. Like if you aren't if you aren't taking up space in the relationship, then uh, the other person is is isn't getting to see all of you. Mm -hmm. So I think there is something to like um you're if you if you hold that stuff back and if it, you are just focused on peacekeeping all of the time. Yeah, which you can't if, do. Then yeah. uh, you're also depriving the other person of an opportunity to really get to know you. Yeah, I've been learning that right? a lot but recently. Like, yeah. That's what makes you human is that you experience like a whole range of emotions. And uh, like somebody doesn't really get to be a partner to you mm -hmm. unless they get to be the cheerleader for you. Sometimes. I know, yeah, and I'd love it. I was just having such a good year. <laughs> you know, I was like, I don't know, nothing's wrong. Like <laughs> and and I totally expected the cheerleaderness to come reciprocated when mm -hmm. I needed it, but it was so rare that I was like, Oh, I got this show and it's kinda stressing me out. That's like my the one thing that happened all year that, mm -hmm. that I needed cheerleading for. Or the one time I vented and they were like, That was a vent. <laughs> like mm -hmm. like um I thought that was yeah, and I I, I don't know, I wanted to uh I wanna be open and available but yeah a lot of people are like are you a damn robot like you're just laughing at everything mm -hmm. i'm like no i don't know i'm just in a good mood today and it's yeah. a miracle you know because there's so many years when i was working in engineering or whatever like all the crappy jobs i've had that um there were so many days that sucked or whatever and i'm it's a miracle the days are as good as they are right now let's enjoy it oh my god i totally feel yeah. that <laughs> and that like totally celebrate that for yeah you. Absolutely. And I, okay, can't wait for you to see the day that I am in shambles. <laughs> but it's not today, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I think it's also like, um, do, you don't have to be in shambles for the other person to be able to support you, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> you you venting about like, oh, I've got the show and I'm stressed yeah. about it and stuff like that, that's valuable too. Yeah, but that, I don't, right? people, but people don't to, seem to, to see in your that, head and I feel. Be like, be like, oh, are my problems just like so small and like this isn't worthy of of even voicing, of even voicing no it is worthy like of voicing yeah. i know that but i thought i was voicing but maybe other people are in there i don't know other people have problems <laughs> and then um it's not that i'm trying to put on like i was in a relationship once where the person had so many problems that i was like the, the last thing she needs is to hear my little complications of what happened at work today oh mm. no like no, no, let's let's put that on the back burner. But then that was the case for years <laughs> yeah. that I never really voiced anything. And then, uh, like, you never know that it might have been nice for the partner to have heard to have something, heard yeah. something from you. Yeah. yeah, to not feel like they're the only one who has problems. Mm, yeah, good or point. Or to feel like they ah, aren't alone in yeah. having a, a negative experience. And they're the one that's always bringing me down or yeah. something. Yeah, I'm like, no, no, don't worry. I right? Like, I, I, I think any kind of one-sided dynamic and I know, any kind yeah. of relationship isn't healthy, I'm right? I'm realizing that for sure. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's, it's, it's easy to have things get shifted in that way when you're not reciprocating negative feelings. It was so weird. I remember not reciprocating negative feelings solely because I wasn't really having that many negative feelings. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was just a good time. <laughs> and that's fine. Yeah, no, not really, right? because like, then it, they're like, I don't know, then that dynamic happens. So I yeah, should Yeah, but be... also, like, you don't, it's, <laughs> you definitely don't need to, like, manufacture no, some yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> problem just to have a problem to share. Yeah. But I think it's just being uh, more open in, in general. And yeah. Like, whatever your authentic experience is of the day, share that. Yeah, exactly. And, and I uh, think that's what's great about this, this oh, assignment. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. And also, like, I think it's important to not um, make assumptions about how the other person is going to take what you're going to say or... Right. That they know, are going like, to be burdened by my, like, especially pestering. Especially if, you're like, uh, like, you're an intelligent person. And uh, so maybe... You might get in your head a little bit where uh, you feel like you understand what's happening and what will happen. And like I, I can be like this sometimes mm -hmm. where it's like it's like, oh, well, like uh, I, I'm having this thing. I could say something. No, they'll probably say this. Right. Like I, I can play yeah. out the whole situation <laughs> yeah. in my head. And so I'm like, well, if, it, if I see the end result and like that doesn't really benefit it, then nah, forget it. 
I but, just won't say anything. But, but you should. But you yeah, should. Yeah, yeah. And also, like, it's uh, hubris to yeah. think that you know how the other person is going to respond. Yeah. Or also, it's you, like uh, an aspect that. of control. Yeah. That it's like, it's not your job to control this whole circumstance. Like, you aren't in control of somebody else's response to yeah, you having a bad day. And you would all, never know what they were going to say. Right? You yeah, have you no idea. Know. You yeah. can make all kinds of assumptions on your end, but you truly don't know mm-hmm. um, what's going to come out the other end. But I'm excited to share more. Yeah. <laughs> sort of, yeah. <laughs> it is funny what you say about the not um, realizing these habits and for yeah. a while. Like, it does take a while to be like, holy moly, I'm holding on to a lot from yeah. previous broken relationships. And you, yeah, you <laughs> just don't realize it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you don't realize that you're um, imprinting a habit in the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, uh, one that I was talking to my sister about this recently right. of, like, uh, I was in a relationship with somebody who, uh, how do I, how do I explain this? It's like they were irritated every time I talked. <laughs> Let's put it that uh, way. So it was right. like if I started talking, yeah, the frustration meter would start on, on their end would start to build. Oh, it starts from it's zero. Start, it doesn't start, go straight to sixty. It goes, no, it starts. Oh, it wow. starts at zero, but it starts raising. Wow. And climbs uh, higher and higher the longer I'm talking. So as I'd be talking, I'd f- feel that m- meter yeah. rising, and I'd know that when we get to the top of the meter, something bad is going to happen. Okay. So I have to stop talking at a certain point, or like get my point out really quickly, and then not continue uh. to talk. And so net, na- and I didn't realize at the time that that was training me to now feel like. Every time I talk, I'm annoying. Yeah, and, which is uh, insane. Yeah, that's like <laughs> that's not. <laughs> and like, it, like, uh, I need to limit how much I have to say. Yeah, and like coordinate your yeah number of words per sentence. Like, oh my god. Yeah. No, no, no. Just and uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, so I'm still like apologizing all the time for talking too much or no really yeah yeah. sometimes i'll notice myself even speeding up how quickly i'm talking Mm -hmm. to try and get and i'm not realizing i'm trying to get something in before the meter is full um even though there's no meter anymore and that person isn't in my life anymore like the people who i keep around in my life don't have a frustration meter for how irritating they find it every time i talk yeah, I th- I, I'm noticing, uh, apologizing is a great one, yeah, or a- I, I'm yeah. noticing mine is uh, asking permission to do anything, yeah. and people are like, I don't care, just do it, yeah, do you mind if I make some eggs? Yeah, yeah whatever, <laughs> just yeah. make the eggs, who cares? <laughs> but yeah, so I and think then they the... feel pressure to have yeah. to be the one who's like babying <laughs> you, <laughs> oh, just fucking it's not good tie for your anybody. shoes, man. It's not good for anybody. <laughs> And I think the way to avoid that stuff, uh, or more of that stuff accumulating in the future, more of those little habits, is to just m- make people treat you right all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To just not, <laughs> not take shit from people that you don't deserve in the moment, even if your thought is like, "I'm strong enough to take this," mm-hmm. or yeah, uh, yeah, don't worry. This you know, will be like I'll be fine. Yeah. yeah, like, uh, like I've got enough like emotional armor to yeah, be able yeah, to yeah. withstand oh, this no. stuff it doesn't matter Life's but, like short. <laughs> don't let them dent the armor yeah yeah know? yeah like, oh great line that's a like... great visual <laughs> that's sick <laughs> that's a really cool visual so as you know Sweet. we end by me giving the guest a genuine compliment yeah all right man this is awesome <laughs> <laughs> i could use this <laughs> You're a delight. Yay. Yeah. You're just, you're the best. You've been a good friend of Love is Everywhere, the show. Since oh, it's the best. Before it was a podcast. Yeah. Um, b- uh, d- at one point when we were trying to make a pilot episode that never got aired, you were the first person I thought of to be the guest for that. Oh, that was a great assignment. Oh, that it's a shame <laughs> that never got aired. Yeah, that was I know. a fun episode. We'll have to bring that assignment right. out, out for the for this podcast. Yeah. But uh, I was so excited to have you on now that we're like up and running and- and stuff like that because you would just embody so much of what this podcast is all about <laughs> it's just like yeah you seem to be a person who's fairly like you're present in the moment and you're just looking for the joy that you're just like in search of what is to be appreciated in the moment and you're so positive you have a, such a warm like kind energy about you that like Everybody picks up on. I think it's just like a universally held opinion that you are just like a sunshine person. (laughs) 
you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, for the listeners, I'm beaming right now. Yeah. Beaming, like sunshine. Yeah, yeah. Sunshine oh, I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sun is coming out of me. <laughs> Photons are killing people. But you're like, you're always beaming. And I like now, now like I know that, that, that there is a dark side. No, 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 <laughs> no, that, I'm just huge, that it's exhausting to to always be that. Um, so I hope that you don't feel burdened by that reputation of being like a sunny and positive. Yeah, no, no, I never that, was. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah I never. You, I never even found it exhausting. I didn't. That, yeah, that you know that like uh, you can let that like let that down sometimes yeah. and and oh, that's, that's totally fine oh, and great. uh <laughs> and everybody will still love and appreciate you you're under no requirement right. to be that positive person um <laughs> but there is just like a um an innate uh yeah glowy quality yeah. A- about you oh that's a great compliment thank you <laughs> you're welcome i want to compliment you and this podcast for like saving my life i don't know like i i was it was totally in my mind about um mental health stuff and like uh when it came to that that first episode that you have where it's just you talking about the science of happiness i'm like this podcast is gonna be amazing <laughs> it blew my mind i was like oh, and i wish you. man we should do an episode where it's like i just come in with notes from previous podcasts because every single time <laughs> every single time an episode comes out i'm like oh man i gotta talk to tracy about that because that is so crazy what a cool thing um we could totally do that that. would be a really funny episode yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) um awesome thanks again thank you thank you for doing it yeah we'll have you back another time. please do yeah Yeah. i'll be here in two seconds this is fun (laughs) and uh love is everywhere you you do it you do the thing that's so great i love how Uh, listeners go be nice to yourself and remember that love is everywhere (laughs) 